If you don't reveal it, you can't heal it. That's a line that I came across recently that I, I can't agree with more emphatically, particularly if we're starting to talk about things like moving towards sexual integrity, and it, it's always moving towards because there's only one Blessed Virgin Mary and you and I aren't her, which means everybody else has a past. And our pasts are things that oftentimes we're ashamed of, hurt by, provoke deep wounds within us. And more often than not, at least my experience, both personally and as a priest, uh, we don't want to let anybody see. But remember, if you don't reveal it, you can't heal it. And so over the last couple of years, in a particular way, I think, uh, I've just made a point, I think prompted by the Holy Spirit, to reveal uh, more and more frequently the fact that in my own past, um, I dealt with having been sexually abused by multiple people on multiple occasions. And I say that more and more now, simply because every time I say that, I find what it does is it gives more and more permission to other people who are out there, who've gone through things like what I went through, to be able to come forward and to try to find healing themselves. If you've gone through abuse, and an alarming number of people have gone through sexual abuse, what it does is it leaves you with feelings of things like, I don't matter, I'm rejected, I don't count, I'm disposable, I'm unlovable, and even with relationship with God, I probably disgust him. Because the person, more often than not, who's been the victim of sexual abuse is assaulted by the devil in lots of different ways. And one of the ways is, this is your fault, even though there is no way that that's true. And so thinking of that line again, if you don't reveal it, you can't heal it. My point really right now is simply to encourage every one of you and myself again, as I'm talking to you, to beg God to bring you somebody wise into your life. It could be a spiritual director, it could be a confessor, it could be a counselor, a therapist, it could just be a great friend. Somebody who loves the Lord deeply and who has the gift of being able to listen and who can offer wise counsel and reveal what needs to get revealed. I think oftentimes our fear is, I'm the only one. When in fact, when we're talking about issues of sexuality and integrity, we're all somewhat disordered. We're the common lot. And the enemy just likes to isolate us and make us think, you know, you're the only one who's struggling with these things, when in fact, that's just not true. And I've learned more and more over the last number of years, especially that in the past, I tried to hide these wounds from, even from Jesus. You know, it's, it's like going to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, you don't want to say, hey, I'm doing great if you're feeling bad. You want, you want the doctor to find what's wrong with you. And in order for that to happen, he has to prod and and poke and probe. And so it is in prayer. And so the beauty is God loves you and he loves me. He doesn't just tolerate me, he loves me and he has tremendous compassion for what it is that I've gone through, both subjected to and subjected myself to. And he has the same compassion and the same extraordinary love for you. And he wants us to bring our wounds to him. In fact, he's actually attracted most to our wounds because he's the divine physician and he loves to heal and he loves to free and he loves to rescue and he loves to help us to grow in abundant life and flourishing. And so as we begin this journey together on growing in sexual integrity, 
Again, I just want to encourage you for two things. Get very vulnerable with the Lord in prayer. If there's something that you're afraid to make known to him, make it known. He knows it anyway, right? Just bring it to him and recognize that he's not running from it. He's running towards it. And ask him, if you don't have somebody like this in your life yet, bring into my life, Lord, somebody that I can reveal these wounds to so that you can heal them.